ancient, awe-striking and extraordinary. Petra has been named one of the new seven wonders of the world for good reason. Sandwiched between Iraq, Syria and both the Red and Dead Seas, and located amid rugged desert canyons and mountains, this sprawling prehistoric site is both Jordan's biggest tourist attraction and one of the oldest cities on Earth. To access Petra, you have to go through the sea, which is this. This extremely long, narrow rock gorge. And on both sides, it's flanked by natural rock faces, which stretch between 80 to 190 meters high. It's pretty spectacular. Cutting through the sandstone as a result of thousands of years of rain and wind, the Seek Passage doesn't hint at what awaits at the other end. The Treasury. Petra has more than 600 of these facades, but the Treasury is undoubtedly the most famous, both because of its beauty, but chiefly thanks to its use as the fictional location of the Holy Grail in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. In the film's climactic final scenes, Indy and his dad burst from the Seek to encounter the jaw-dropping structure, and it's the same route that most tourists use today. But rather than the resting spot for the Holy Grail, in reality, the treasury's purpose was very different, as I found out. Ali, what do archaeologists think the treasury was? So the archaeologists believe that this beautiful facade was used as a tomb for the Nabatean King Aritas IV because they found a skeleton bones and they found also teeth in an intact way. So for that they believe that it was used as a tomb for the king. The treasury's name comes from the Bedouin tribes who believe that the urn at the top of the facade contained gold. You can still see the bullet holes from their attempts to crack it open. But unfortunately for them, there was no gold, just solid sandstone. And today, the descendants of these original Bedouin still remain in Petra, as do their traditional modes of transport. I think I've made a new friend. Thousands of years ago, Petra was far from a dusty archaeological site. It was a thriving trading center. Ali, how big was Petra? According to archaeologists, the, the immediate site is about 60 square kilometers. 60 square kilometers, wow. Yeah. And how many people lived here? We don't have an accurate number, but the archaeologists estimated that between the 20 to 30,000 people, because Petra was the capital of the Nabatean kingdom. Right. And out of those people, I mean, was it just a microcosm of everyone? Was it all of society? Yeah, yeah. The whole people lived in the side, from the kings to the princes to the uh, common people, like workers. And also during the Nabatean time, or in the Nabatean society, there was no slaves, not like the Egyptian civilization. The scale of Petra is ridiculous. You could sightsee for eight hours solid every day for a week and still wouldn't have seen everything. As such, given its size, it's hard to believe that Petra was lost to the Western world for five centuries. In fact, it wasn't until 1812 when it became a blip on the international radar again. Hence its moniker, the Lost City. Ali, when the Romans arrived at 106 AD, they made some big changes in Petra, didn't they? Including this main street. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so now we are walking in the Roman side. So when the Roman invaded the city by 106, they reorganized the, this place as a Roman style. So now we are in the Cardo. The, this cardo, or the main street, was colonnaded by a lot of columns. To the right, we had the shops, and to the left, we had the market area, and also the garden, and the pool, and also we have the great temple. Though centuries may have passed since the Roman Empire fell, some things in Petra haven't changed. There were markets on this main street back in ancient Roman times, and today, the Bedouins are carrying on that tradition with their own markets. Homes, temples, baths, libraries, theatres, colonnaded streets, there's an A to Z of ancient buildings here. But one type of structure is prevalent more than the other. Tombs. Petra is home to 800 different tombs. The ones behind me are the royal tombs, and you can see that from their grand facades. So this place is perfect for anyone who wants to live out their adventuring archaeologist fantasies. Left alone, I decided to have my very own Indiana Jones adventure. However, I soon figure out that being a pretend archaeologist isn't all Hollywood glamour. 
When you're exploring the tombs, most of them are now used as toilets, so they're a bit whiffy. The number of Aussies visiting Jordan, and by proxy Petra, has been increasing year on year. And while the treasury has all the hype, and all the tourist traffic, if you're looking for the real magic of the Rose City, get off the main sightseeing drag and work up a sweat. If you've got the energy and you want to get off the tourist trail, it's pretty easy. Petra has several hikes that range from about an hour to seven hours that take you away from the main sites to this. Uninterrupted tombs, vistas, and the best thing is you have it completely to yourself. There's no denying that walking uphill in 36 degree heat is pretty hard going, but it's so worth it for this view. Speaking of ditching the tourists, the route through the Sikh can be rammed if you visit during high season. But there is a way to bypass the masses and access the city without the crowds. Earlier I accessed Petra the regular way through the Sikh along with all the other tourists. And now I'm going to try through the back way, which is completely deserted. Thing is, it's a 10 kilometer hike, so I better get started. So how come tourists don't know that it exists? You know, because it is very far yeah, from the entrance and also it takes about 1 hour 30 minutes walking. In some areas it takes about 2 hours 30 minutes. So for that, not so many people come through this way. They just don't want to walk that far. Yeah. <laughs> Even Ali wasn't confident in navigating the area, so we had to rope in a local Bedouin guide to help us. And during the journey, we didn't see another soul. Five kilometers in, halfway through, but at least it's downhill now. Yalla. While Petra is a hot tourist destination for the rest of the world, to the local Bedouin, it's something else entirely. So Salame, what does Petra mean to you? The debates on the effects of mass tourism on a fragile site like Petra still rage on, archaeologists know that we've barely scratched the surface of this prehistoric capital. In fact, only a few years ago, huge structures were discovered beneath the desert sands using satellite imagery. Despite Petra's obvious scale, in fact only 15% has been excavated. That leaves a whopping 85% undiscovered and untouched. So one thing's for sure, this lost city isn't revealing all of its secrets anytime soon.